concussions can and do happen to many more people than just athletes. And I think the public doesn't realize what a concussion is. It used to be thought that if you were concussed, you had to be unconscious and laying on the field, knocked out. But we've found over the years that many people have symptoms later from a concussion that were never unconscious. Maybe they were just dizzy or couldn't remember things, had amnesia for several minutes after being hit in the head. All those are now being defined as concussions, and they can all have long-term effects. Well, five years ago, when the uh, patient came in that was concussed, we would say, where are you and what day is it? And if you could answer that, you were sent home if your imaging was normal. And we realized that only 9% of uh, people that are concussed are going to have abnormal findings on a CAT scan or an MRI, which would be the only imaging that's available to us in the ER. And we thought that some of these people were being sent out that were not normal, even though they were oriented. And so we use a test called the Standardized Assessment of Concussion that is a one-page test that tests their orientation, so we get the day of the week and the month and the year, but we also find out what their memory is like, their immediate memory and their concentration, and then their delayed memory. And we found that the delayed memory, asking them to recall words that were used earlier in the test, is what really gives us a clue as to whether they're concussed or not. The people that are concussed will come in and say, what happened, and you explain that to them, and you walk out of the room and you walk back in, and they ask the same question. They say, what happened? Because their memory is not there, and they don't have the delayed recall that they should have. So we found that we can identify that on this test, and we're using it in the emergency room, which leads us to believe that not only can we identify concussions better in the emergency room, but we could take this out to the community because this test is a simple one-page free test that any coach could use on the sidelines to identify a concussion. And I think if they identify a concussion, they're much more likely to get treated and to have uh, some sort of evaluation, which they normally wouldn't have if they weren't knocked out. And sometimes even if they are knocked out and they want to go play again, they'll put them back in the game. But if these tests are not normal, they probably shouldn't go back in the game. When you consider what happens when someone falls down, they fall forward and hit the ground often, or they fall back. But there's a bony ridge here in the brain that the bone hits up against often if the head rattles back and forth. And so the frontal lobes and the prefrontal cortex are thought to be the areas where concussion would occur. And so what happens is this is your executive function. This enables you to calculate and coordinate the activities of the rest of your brain. And so if this is out for some reason, you're going to have difficulty with lots of things, including calculation and memory. Now, the memory isn't per se in the frontal lobe. It goes down into the hippocampus where memory is stored. But it starts out here. So if you're doing um, a telephone number, for example, you're going to remember it first here in your immediate memory, and then you're going to put it into your long-term memory in the hippocampus. So if this area of the brain is knocked out for whatever reason, you're not able to store that memory. So you're going to have a problem with your delayed recall, which is what we see in people with concussion. These are serious injuries, and they should be considered as so.